selling world has changed. Uh, if you look at things like the, the B2B digital revolution where buyers now have more data than sellers, uh, there's been a shift from sustainable competitive advantage to we now need to learn to compete on a series of short-term transient advantages. Your value, competitor's value, customer needs, your go-to-market strategies, those are all changing real time. And so we refer to this as competing at the speed of change. So all of this impacts negotiation for sure. The role of a seller has changed, uh, negotiation training has not. What I want to start with is telling you, I'm not here to teach you how to negotiate. You would not be sitting in this room uh, unless you were pretty good at this. So what, what I am here to do is to help you understand the strengths and weaknesses that you bring with you here today. And by the time we're finished around 11.30, you should have a better sense of how to leverage your strengths and how to shore up some of those weaknesses, right? And so um, I, I think the challenge we do have is greater than teaching you how to negotiate. The challenge we have today is to take your skills to world class. And, and so when I talk about world class, we've been doing this for about 17 years. I started this company with a, a Harvard negotiation professor. We've worked in 47 countries on about 20,000 business negotiations with uh, companies like uh, Microsoft, not LinkedIn, by the way, uh, Google, FedEx, companies you would know. And so the reason I give you all that is because we are focused on doing deals. Again, we've consulted, forget the training piece, we've consulted on 20,000 business negotiation. And what I want to have you get a sense of today is, is where your skills sort of stand with how the best in the world do this, right? So it's a little bit greater challenge than, than teaching skills that's throttling you up to a level that's world class. Our approach to negotiation is something we call negotiation blueprinting. So we're going to audit, and there's only three things. It took us 16, 17 years working all over the world, and, and you all are in the, the skills business, so you'll appreciate this. We started over-engineering this thing many years ago. Oh, this is cool. Let's add this in. This is really cool. Let's add this is interesting. Let's add this in. And about eight years ago, we started reverse engineering and said, what matters? Based on a lot of the live deal coaching we were doing, what really matters in preparation and execution of negotiations? This is what we're going to audit. Something called consequence no agreement. Second thing, something called trading. The third thing, anchoring or, or opening offer. So those are the three things we're about to debrief. Your planning and execution against this thing that we call the negotiation blueprint. So how about planning and execution process? So we purposefully, we're really good at writing custom case studies, and we purposefully kept this one sort of playfully in your world, but out of what you do on a daily basis to kind of zero base all of our skills so nobody had a, uh, an advantage. How did your planning and execution process feel? When you were sitting there reading, did you go back to your negotiation, step-by-step -step negotiation planning process? You knew exactly what you were looking for. And when you went to meet with the other side, you executed your plan precisely the way you usually do a negotiation. Or did both of those things, I see at least one, two head shakes. Did it feel very organized and systematic or a little bit Willy-nilly, yeah, okay. So again, this is, this is, all of this is about auditing your own planning and execution process. It should not feel that way. It's really not about tips and tricks, uh, but, but rather facts and insight, right? The tips and tricks are interesting in negotiation training, but what we focus on is what's effective? What are the two or three things that we have to focus deeply on that actually make a difference in business negotiation? With large groups, we've identified a, a really innovative and interactive way to basically audit the planning and execution skills for two, three, four hundred people simultaneously. So we, we set them up in an exercise that, that ultimately has them creating a bidding or a pricing war. And so it's during the debrief after they report their strategies back that we can show them mistakes they made that led to that price war, uh, how to avoid those mistakes, as well as smart things they did during the planning and how to repeat that. And ultimately we'll introduce a very simple three-step negotiation process to change the negotiation conversation. It's changing the conversations from prices of products and services to the value of our solutions. What we don't want to do is sell on value only to end up negotiating price. We need to start thinking about changing and leading the negotiation conversation as soon as we start pursuing an opportunity.